Look at this animal here. This is a sea urchin and it's ha it has moving spikes. Uh, and what I did today is I put one of these creepy animals under the microscope. As a matter of fact, I put the spikes here. You see one. I put the spikes of a sea urchin under the microscope. This was not an easy task. Um, as a matter of fact, I had several problems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I nevertheless managed to do this. Well, first of all, you of course have to find a sea urchin. So I put on my beach shoes. I wanted to protect my feet, of course. I did not want to step on, of, uh, on one of them. And here you see me walking through the water, looking uh, through the waves uh, to the floor of the ocean, trying to find sea urchins. And it was really difficult and I did not find anything. I found nothing. Well, except a sea cucumber. But these are of course not sea urchins and look how they try to cling to the rock. I think they're fascinating creatures as well. Uh, but uh, I put into my mind I wanted to put sea urchins under the microscope and not sea cucumbers. And we found also a lot of hermit crabs. Uh, these are little crabs that have hijacked a, a seashell. And uh, as a matter of fact, we found quite a lot of them, but no sea urchins. Uh, so the next day I changed my strategy and I used my underwater camera. And uh, this way I was indeed successful walking along uh, the floor um, with my camera in the hand. I did find uh, several sea urchins and I wanted to pick them up, but it couldn't because they were attached very firmly to the ground, to the rock. And this was another problem. So I found the sea urchins, but I really could not get ha a hold of them because um, they would not want to be removed. Um, so I was a little bit uh, concerned and I said, okay, well, maybe the rest of the day I'm just uh, going to swim around a little bit and enjoy the day. In the evening, I enjoyed the sunset as well and I was wondering what, what I should do next. Well, the sunset was quite beautiful, but the next day, luckily, we had a low tide. This means that uh, the water retreated quite a bit and a large part of the seafloor was exposed. And this allowed me now to walk over the rocks of the seafloor and to look um, um, what I can find. And after a few minutes, I did indeed find something, but this, I have to admit, creeped me out a little bit even more than the sea urchins. It was a slime ball. I have absolutely no idea what this is. Here next to it, another one. Of course, I was afraid of touching it, so I used a rock. And look at this. This is horribly disgusting. I have no idea what it is. Uh, if you know what it is, please leave a comment. Yeah. And so I moved on um, a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, was the seaweed was already drying up a little bit. And yes, I found one. Here it is. And uh, we picked it up we actually saw that its spikes are moving. This is uh, quite remarkable. I did not know that, that sea urchins um, have movable spikes. Um, as a matter of fact, I asked my son to pick it up because I was a little bit afraid, I have to admit, but he had absolutely no problems doing that. And uh, we put it on the rock and to my big surprise, it started to move across the rock. Uh, look at this, um, it maybe it tries to find the water. And I had now another problem. How in the world am I supposed to put this under the microscope? I was thinking about breaking off some of the spikes, but this would have been cruelty to animals. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt um, any, um, any animals uh, simply for my microscopy uh, explorations. Um, so I was sitting again in the evening, uh, lo looking at the sunset, not knowing what to do. And I already gave up and I knew that my subscribers, they don't like it if I do have harm to animals. Um, so I had to find a different solution. The next day I was uh, going through the sand a little bit and I found quite something quite interesting. When I looked at the sand in uh, um, close up, I discovered that in the sand there are black, small, long structures in them. So I'm spreading out the sand. You look very carefully, you can actually see that there are those long black structures. And I did not know what they are at the beginning, but I found out that these are the broken fragments and the spikes of sea urchins that were washed on shore by the wave action. 
So what I did is I used my tweezers and I collected them. Um, and uh, I've now got uh, a, an almost unlimited source of sea urchin spikes. And here's another one, look at this. Yeah. And after a few hours, well not few hours, I spent maybe an hour or one and a half hours going through the sand, um, I was able to collect quite a few of them. But unfortunately I also found glass pieces and a little bit of pollution as well. So of course I'm not going to collect that. But there were also many, many small microscopic seashells and snails. And here you see me going through the sand and I found around 24 of them in a very short time. I now added some tap water to wash them because I wanted to remove the salt uh, because the salt would have formed a salt crust um, on the spikes and I did not want that so I simply rinsed them a little bit uh, with water and I put them under my stereo microscope and I found out that they look extremely beautiful and regular under the stereo microscope. As a matter of fact they reminded me a little bit of the pillars which were sculptured out of marble that you sometimes find in old temples. Very regular and very polished I would almost say. And uh, one of the things that kind of also surprised me a, a bit is, is that they have a different color. Some of them were a little bit brighter than others. Of course they had a different thickness. And I waited then also a little bit uh, for the water to dry and I also had a closer look at the dried uh, sea urchin spikes and they too look very very remarkable and now they really start to look a little bit like marble, like polished marble. I was a little bit also surprised that they are not more eroded than they look like so apparently they have to be quite hard to have be able to sustain um, all of the erosion and the wave action process. Yeah, so this is a complete sea urchin spike that we just saw again. And by moving around the little plastic lid, I could move all of the relevant sea urchin spikes into focus and into position here at a slightly larger magnification. Very remarkable, the different colors. And still, all of them look very similar in the sense that they have those parallel grooves in them that run parallel. Very, very nice. Well, um, here we have a microscope slide with an indentation. So, and these microscope slides are designed to accept specimens that are a little bit thicker. Um, I'm now adding again a little bit of uh, tap water and now I'm placing one of those complete um, spikes into uh, the water. Um, here's also a second one. And uh, a cover glass goes on top uh, because using dark field, I want to have a closer look um, at uh, these spikes. Of course, all of the excess water should be removed. And to my big surprise, when I put it under the microscope, to my big surprise, they look even more beautiful. Now look at this, isn't this great? I mean, it looks like it's almost uh, shining and glowing. And you can see that uh, it also has different colors as you move along the spike. I think nature is indeed quite remarkable in that sense. And here is the complete spike stitched together from two images. Well, what a difference uh, to such a creepy looking uh, sea urchin. But then again, everything's a question of perspective, right? I mean, if you just look under the microscope, you'll see so many more beautiful details. And so for the first time in several days, I couldn't enjoy the sound of the waves a little bit. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. And bye-bye. See you next time.